let's see now. Um, so we've seen that the, the, with the previous video, we have seen the uh, axial skeleton. So uh, now we're going to see the um, appendicular skeleton. So axial um, head. Rib cage and sacrum, but I'm going to put, I include uh, also the rest of the pelvis, right? Just for for our purpose, it's better to include the whole pelvis um, in the actual skeleton. It's easier. Um, now we're going to see the appendicular skeleton. which is arms and legs. So, <clears throat> study quickly with a blocking in the head and review quickly the, uh, the actual skeleton of the head as a, a upside down egg, the rib cage as an upright egg, it's easier to think in these uh, very essential forms rather than going after the organic forms. At the top of my egg, I'm not going to cut, up, cut the top off like a, a soft boiled egg. And um, the sternum is going to occupy a little bit more than um, half the total length of the rib cage. At the bottom of the sternum, I opened costal arch. And the pelvis here is going to look like a bucket where um, that contains, basically contains intestine and permits up to walk. At the upper quarter of the total height of the pelvis, I'm go going to put the iliac spines, those two little nubs that we have in front here on the side, and the lower quarter, the pubic bone. So now, these three segments are going to be aligned along an axis, right? And which is pretty much the spine, right? So I want to attach now to the axial skeleton the <clears throat> arms and legs. All right? Let's see what happens. Where do I put the arms? So this point in here, the base of the neck, is called um, um, pit of the neck. You can call it. Um, or uh, sternal jugular fossa. From here, at this level, I'm going to have the clavicle, with good approximation. The um, arm is uh, at the end of the clavicles here, just below them, in here, right? So, the proportional relationship of the segment of the arms are this. The upper arm is the longest segment of the tree and arrives pretty much at the level of the waist, pretty much at the, at the level of the umbilicus or just above, with good approximation, the top of the pelvis. The forearm comes down to the level more or less to the genitals, the wrist at the level of the genitals, and the hand is down a little bit below that, we'll see how much. But the interesting thing I want to see is that this segment, the upper arm, is always bigger than this segment, and this segment is clearly always bigger than the hand. So there is this proportion, proportional relationship that you have to maintain. You cannot make this longer than that. That's not the way it is. So knowing this, um, and knowing that uh, pretty much at the level of the waist, I have the elbow here, I know that I could, with fulcrum in here, for example, ro uh, rotate the arms out, right, and kind of extrapolate the length of the upper arm, which is similar to the length of the torso. I'm sorry, of the rib cage. See that? So here, and then I know that now the next segment is going to be slightly shorter than this segment. So if I have a bent arm, I could do this and then stop short 
of the top of the humerus, of the upper arm, and then the hand is going to be um, shorter than that. So remember this, the hand is never bigger than the head, right? Is slightly smaller than the head. So I have my hand like this, and I say, okay, it could be a little bit bigger, right? It could be a little bit bigger. So, but this is the proportional relationship within the segments of the uh, um, appendicular arms, and in this case, with the head. So the legs. When I, um, where do I attach the legs? Right? We have seen I attach the uh, the arms just below the, the the collarbone, the clavicles. Uh, just below the level of the jugular fossa. I can also put the, the neck in here, right? So the joint, the hips, is here just above the pubic bone, which is at the lower quarter. So remember, remember this, that look at the cool tool I have. See that you take this segment in here, right, from the top of the head to the pubic bone and double it down pubic bone to the feet. That's where the feet are going to be. These two segments tend to be very similar. It could be that this is a little bit longer and or a little bit shorter. Then you measure it and you see in the model and you see what you have. Now, for for simplicity's sake, I'm going to simply double these two segments, okay? So the, the joint, uh, the joint of the hips is here, just above the lower quarter of the pubic bone. So here and here. From here, I'm going to have my leg stemming out, and I can give them whatever um, angle I want, you know? Here, and then maybe here. You know, you decide what angle that you, you, you want your legs to have. So now let's see, the top of the leg tends to be the groin in here, right? The, the point where the, the leg begins, right? Tends to be uh, halfway between the pubic bone, sorry, the pubic bone and the iliac spines, right? Iliac spines and pubic bone. Halfway between these two, I have the leg. Imagine those fishing boots, right? They have curves, they are curved like that at the top. It's because uh, um, that's where the leg bends. So they follow that, that, that bend, right? So now here, how long is the tie? The tie starting from the groin here, the, when you have the, 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 the uh, flexing point of the leg, is from here to here the, to the knee is two heads, right? So I take this one, two, right? Two heads, one, two here, right? That's the thigh, that's the thigh. And below that, I have the lower leg, including the feet. So we're going to have a similar um, reduction in length of the segment of the leg as we have in uh, the arm. So this is going to be two heads. The thigh is going to be two heads. This, the lower leg, is going to be two heads, including the feet. So, and the feet are going to be always shorter than the lower leg, right? So if the hand is always slightly shorter than the head, the foot is going to be as long or slightly bigger than the head, right? So when you draw your figure, like say, like this, right on the side where the foot is visible, you're thinking, how big should that be? You know, ah, I don't know. Then you do this: check, draw your draw your foot, and then check with the head, and you say, okay, the same size, good. But now you know that following this method, the proportional relationship are going to be very, very. Um, uh, of very, very good help, and um, uh, the uh, the proportion that you have established are very um, within the norm, okay, the typical measurement. Then you look at your margin. My model has bigger feet, so you make them a little bit bigger, right? Um, 
the now that I have the, the the thigh, I can show you how the hand here is about halfway down the length of the thigh. It could be a little bit more, a little bit less. So next, we're going to see the um, proportions of um, the female body. <laughs> 